Welcome, everybody. So today we're super pleased to welcome Clara Ravat. Uh, in addition to being a friend of mine and a collaborator of the Institute's, uh, Clara has quite a bio, which I will read to you now. Thanks for um, having me, Saskia. <laughs> Clara, it's so nice to, it's just nice to talk to you. <laughs> so, okay, so by opposing the division between the realm of memory and the realm of experience, Clara Ravat absorbs the tradition of remembrance art into daily practice. By investigating the concept of landscape in an adventurous and exploratory way, she wants to amplify the wonder of the spectator by creating compositions or settings that generate tranquil poetic images and leave traces and balances on the edge of alienation and recognition. After studying qualitative trend research in Barcelona, Clara moved to the Netherlands where she graduated with a Bachelor's of Art at the Royal Academy of Arts. At the same time, she started studying psychology at the Open University of Catalonia. Clara is the co-founder and director of the Smell Lab, a platform for olfactory art and interdisciplinary practices that relate to scent as a medium for expression and communication in Berlin, and also in an international context. The Smell Lab's main mission is to co-produce, host, educate, innovate, and support artistic practices that involve the sense of smell and olfaction. You can learn more about Clara uh, on her website, which if Mineta doesn't beat me, because Mineta is very fast. Aha. Yes. Sharp. Wait, uh, she's on it. Everyone in meeting. I said to the right people. Minetta's <laughs> amazing. Her camera's off today because it's early here, but we see you, Minetta. <laughs> so, Clara, welcome. I'm super happy to see you. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? How's Berlin? Berlin is good. Berlin is safe. We got a summer right now. Like today was like 27 Celsius degrees, which is like what? End of September? Oh, oh. man. Yeah, but it's good. I'm uh, I'm at the Smell Lab. Actually, it's a shared space, but I'm I'm alone at the moment. It might be that someone comes in at some point, like no my problem. colleague. Um, yeah. The more the merrier. Yeah. At that point, I'll use the headphones if someone comes in. Cool. So I want to start just with your sort of your your back background. So I mean, we just yeah. read your bio, so we know a little bit about it. But let's talk about the point at which you you. Um, you came to smell so what what you were studying art what was it about scent that what, when did you first clock scent as a creative medium for um, i i have to be kind of uh, a bit melancholic about it like uh, scent is something i've been interested interested in since i'm a, a child actually um i mean like kids play with things i used to play like with plants and try i tried to extract the scent from plants and so on so the idea of being a perfumer was always in my mind, but in this romantic way of the perfumer, this person who just makes things without knowing the path, of course, that you have to do to become a perfumer. And um, yeah, did many different things until I ended up in the art school, in the art science department, in the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague. And over there, I was so lucky to have uh, Caro Verbeck as my teacher um, she's a curator for, for the other senses, art historian. She does a PhD on Futuri sense. Um, so at her class is when I realized like, look, I can do this without being a perfumer and just experiment and do it my, my own way. And ever since that was back in 2000, when was this? Back in 2011, I think. Um, yeah, and then from, from then onwards, I just couldn't stop learning and doing. <laughs> so how did you incorporate scent into your, into your art? Because you also, you're also an experimental filmmaker, which I neglected to say in your bio. So yeah, that, and, that and, and film was your thing been... for a while. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I started incorporating scent on films, like really, really basic things at the beginning as I have this film installation on space. I, analog film installation with 16 millimeter projectors, super eight projectors, very spatial, right? So I thought like, I wanna create a good vibe for audience when they come and experience my pieces. So really starting from just the perspective of generating like a mood. Uh, then I started work, working uh, a bit more precise um, around the feelings and expectations you wanna create when someone is watching a film and all I've done is experimental film, right? So it's either very abstract or like really like landscape like. Um, so at, at some point you find yourself like merging both mediums 
as an experience. So how would you do that? Would you sort of have scent in the environment when people were watching the film or? Yeah, so um, each piece is different, right? So I, I had this film called Petriture back in 2014. It's, it was like a expanded cinema piece with three projectors. And this was all a film about um, how the scent of Petriture might be actually um, created. So I just shoot it uh, on my garden. I have a small terrace in Berlin, like I live on the ground floor and I just spent like a whole autumn filming rainy days, leaves, flowers in my, in my garden, like things that I thought that would create that scent. Um, so when I presented the films at some point, I had like the petrichor smell coming out without notice. So yeah, just creating some, a bit of a game with, with the audience and, uh, other times it's more conceptual, like I did this uh, film called Pixel Jungle, which is actually about the scent of, of Barcelona, but it's more like a visual representation uh, taken from some 35 millimeter steels and then put into 60 millimeter film. So, so that's super abstract and there is no scent when you see the film, yeah. It's so, so actually, I mean, <laughs> to get conceptual, how do you, because yeah. I, I see a lot, you know, there's a lot of projects around the scent of place, you know, um, yeah. you know, the scent of LA, the scent of New York, whatever. How do you, I mean, how do you do that, you know, without getting, I mean, there's two approaches. You can either go technical and like get all the materials that are in yeah. the area, but most cities smell like cities, you know, so how did you get a specific specificity for Barcelona? For this film, I really focused on my subjectivity towards the city. So what makes me feel like home in Barcelona? Uh, and for that, I had like, I think I had like three main categories. One was like daytime, which would be like orange trees and uh, yeah, basically oranges because um, there is a very beautiful patio in El Raval. Uh, which is right next to a library, an art school, and it's called Patio de los Naranjos, like the orange tree patio. And I think that's, that's one of the last spots in the center that it's so kind of pure and old school Barcelona. So then I just focus more on the colors for that side. Then another, another section of the film was more like Barcelona night. And on that, um, Again, I focus on like more like purple and darker colors and related to the scent of like fragrances that people wear while they are like walking through the Ramblas. Uh, so in this case, it's very like my... Yeah, memory. I mean, that's all it can ever be really, right? I mean, it's so personal how we perceive our spaces and whatnot, but, yeah. but you're also bringing up the, the sort of correlation between scent and color, which is interesting because also, again, you get into this thing where like, what does purple smell like, you know? Exactly, and it's so different. Like, <laughs> I gave a workshop at a primary school in Cambridge in March, just before the whole corona mess, and I asked the kids to associate colors to the scent and of course, they all had different opinions. They were so pissed that they had to choose commonly one of them. We were like, no, this smells purple, this smells green. It was so cute. Yeah, you, I'm sure you see a lot of projects like I do. Uh, and I'm always interested in how people interpret that, you know. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so you were working with scent in the context of your film and your art. And at some point, you decided to sort of formalize this into a, a public practice, you know. Yeah. And you founded Smell Lab. So, so tell, tell us all a little bit about that, that you know. What... Yeah, so I moved to Berlin uh, end of 2014. And when I moved here, uh, someone who had studied with me at the Art Academy was thinking of opening an art space. Um, and then um, his colleague was going to take care of opening some sort of um, community project, like where different people are um, kind of carrying out groups of people working in different themes and so on. So they asked me like, oh, we know you work with scent. Maybe you want to start like a community based on scent. So that's how I co-founded the Smell Lab. That was back in 2015. Maybe I just read shortly like a couple of sentences about it. So the project was born as part of a broader community program of a gallery space spectrum, which existed from 2015 to I think 2019. 
Um, after two years of collaboration with the gallery, we took different paths. And uh, since then, I've been hosting like workshops in Berlin and in Europe and yeah, co-producing uh, projects. Uh, yeah. So right now, like Smell Lab and my practice kind of in like, yeah, kind of. You are a small lab now. Yeah, yeah it just goes together and <laughs> apart. Yeah. Do you ever have a temptation to separate Clara Ravat out of small lab? I wish, but it's impossible. It's not possible because um, it's like people who. So we could say that Smell Lab without me could be like the educational program. Um, I'm, 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 I am hosting most of the workshops, but. I could have someone else hosting them, you know, like, um, so this would be more purely like smell lab, but then a lot of people is interested in working with me as a smell lab label. So yeah. I'm sure you have the same. Exact same problem. I actually thought yeah. of creating a second identity. <laughs> you know? I was thinking about it too. I'm like, I'm so fed up of all these things. Oh my god. I put my Instagram private, you know, like I, I about two, three years ago, I just was like, I can't handle this anymore. And I started trying to separate myself from the Institute. I you know. know, but yeah, as you know, it's you become I mean, because you're, you know, you're the founder, you become, it becomes your you, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, do you ever feel limited by it? Or do you feel like not yet? Not limited? Um, no, I don't feel limited. Uh, yeah, but it's like, uh, sometimes feels more like uh, I'm people pleasing, you know, like, like people are interested on the story of one person inside a larger context, like from press to, to I mean, collaborations, like, it makes sense. I, I understand that, like, things go quicker also when you speak one to one, but um, yeah, it's sometimes confusing. It's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm asking these questions, realizing I should be asking myself. Yeah. I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Clara. Clara, guys, Clara and I have known each other for a while and we like, we compare notes, so it's hard to. <laughs> But it's funny that you said that you also that you were thinking of creating another identity. Oh, hundred like, percent. I mean, because I mean, you know, you get to a point where you're like, I mean, you know, I'm an artist, or at least I used to be. Yeah. You know, and you get to, and you're an artist, and you get to a point where you're like, well, where is my own work in all this? You know, the yeah. administration becomes the work. You know, the nonprofit becomes. Oh, the, uh, yeah. Or the organization becomes the work is managing the organization, and you know. But yeah. I think I think that. But having said that, I think you've been very good about about doing all these projects that are very clearly Clara led and and I'd like to talk about them a little yeah. bit because there's so much to talk about. So I have a little list of things I wanted to talk about with you. So yeah. uh, I'm just going to go down the list. Okay. So the first one is is uh, the scent for the vinyl sleeve. Um, yeah. Tell me about that a little. So this been this has been a project it's just like right now happening like um I've been working on a bespoke scent for a musician. She's called uh, Key H. Uh, Marie. She's from, uh, I'm going to pronounce this terribly, Abhus, from uh, Denmark. Denmark. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> well, she's from there. <laughs> she's actually going to have her, her new, like, she, she's going to have the concert, like, I think um, tomorrow night is the first concert. Anyways, we've been working on a scent for her new vinyl. I have it here. It's Marie. Um, she's, I would say she's a pop musician. Um, yeah, she sings in, in Danish. So I made a scent that it's right here. Yeah, it's amazing. So you touch the vinyl sleeve and then the scent comes out. How cool. Yeah, it's been a really nice project. Um, so I have here a couple of sentences on the idea of the stand. So the lyrics of her new album are written by a poet called Morten Sondergaard. And these lyrics are inspired by the book of the Songs of Songs. This is a unique holy scripture among Jewish and Christian, and it's um, almost totally absent of religious allegory and imaginary. And instead, it tells the story of an intensely romantic courtship between two lovers. 
So then Sand is inspired on these lyrics. And apparently, like, the whole story happens in nature, in the mountains. So it's a very earthy sand um, with a hardcore Middle Eastern uh, touch of rose, vanilla, um, and uh, some citrix to make it a bit more, like, uh, fresh. And she's also using the scent at her concerts. And eventually, Ana de Rico is the person in charge to uh, um, said like the sand performance on stage. So she's there now working on it with my bottles. <laughs> That's cool. And yeah. what was the process of collaboration like? I, I the so we first had a workshop with some uh, people in re that are related to the music uh, university and the theater and so on. Um, and the workshop was helping us to figure out how people feel uh, about certain ingredients. And if some ingredients were nicely related to her music um, and so on. So it was like a first getting in touch about the potential smells that we could use. And then after that, uh, I made like, I think I did, I did like three different options and you know how it goes. Like you make three options, I send them, we have a meeting online, they smell them, we evaluate them together, send the second round, same story, we evaluate and then third round, we already could like go for the last scent. And how, and well, I mean, not to get into the technicalities, but are you, are you doing a rub and sniff or how are you? Yeah, yeah. this is a rub and sniff, yeah. Then I send the, the liquid to microencapsulate uh, to oh, some yeah. company, yeah. And then uh, I basically mix, no, this time I didn't get microcapsules. Actually this time I got a, a varnish already. Got it. Yeah, so I, I painted myself the varnish all over like 300 vinyl sleeves. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my still smelling like that. Oh man, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Well, the glamorous work. <laughs> exactly. Maybe someday I have a production team. Not yet. Yeah, yeah one day. That'll be less yeah. fun in a way. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, so that's, that's an exciting, I'm excited for that project. I, I look forward to sort of trying, I, I don't know, is the album available uh, outside of Europe or? Yeah, I think you can pre-order it. Uh, I can later put a... Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. And yeah, and she, did you send this link? I did, yeah. Sorry. Is that her music? I think so. Okay, yeah, it's also on Spotify. Uh, not the whole yeah. album, but like few songs. Um, well, I don't know. Yeah, you can pre-order the album, I think. Well, pre-order not anymore, right? Like we already have 300 to sell, so. Yeah, order, order the album. Yeah, you can order, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool, so, um, so have you worked with music before with Sen? Yes. Um, you know, I tend to forget the things I do. Mm. I know I've done it. But Same here. It's like I started a list. I started keeping a list of things just to keep track yeah. in my own mind. Yeah. Um, before this, I've been working for a while with a friend of mine, Mara from Zurich. Um, she's gonna release the album soon, and together we've been working on a room spray actually. To to smell while you listen to the album. Yeah. That's cool. This smell is like almost pure galbanum. It's like green wow. tomato. Like yeah, um, we are we are final, finalizing it right now actually. And with music, what else have I done with music? No, that was more like visuals, like DJing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can can think about it. No. That's okay. Let's so you have plenty no. of other things to talk about. Um, yeah. Let's talk about your instant insect breeding project. Um, I know. Yeah, oh. because that's pretty interesting. So um, the Insect Breeding Institute is a project organized and created by Alex Murdin. Um, um, this has been basically a really fun commission in Cambridge in the UK. He's put together a group of people, um, biologists, uh, an artist from the area, 
an artist from London, sound artist also from London. Hope I'm not forgetting anyone and myself. And the idea was to create a new insect aesthetic for a primary school in Cambridge called Trumpington Park College. So we have hosted each of us a workshop for the kids. In my case, it's like a eight year old kids. Can I screen share or? Yeah, I think you can. Do you want to? Gonna work? Yeah, I'm going to try it so I can show some pics of the kids. Yeah, please. Um, screen share. Okay, not, yeah, here. Share. Can you see it? Definitely. You see only the picture or the folder? We see the sort of the, the folder, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, maybe we can just look it from here. So this was a uh, eight year old kids and um, we had a workshop together about where the insects live. So we thought on a, uh, yeah, they picked up their favorite insect basically. And then they made a drawing about where, where, where are they living? And then we made a scent about this landscape. Um, I gave them a kids. workshop like, sorry? They're sweet kids. Yeah, they were so enthusiastic. And I basically gave them a workshop as for adults. Like, they were so amazing describing. Like this girl over here was so sharp. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. And then they made their bottles of sand and um, yeah, they took it home. And then as part of this commission, I made uh, three huge pillows. I don't have the pictures of the pillows yet, but these are the sketches. Uh, this one is massive. Like the flower number five is like two meters and a half long or something wow. like that. Yeah. And then they have sand inside. So it is supposed to be like fun for the kids. Like they have it on their chill out area. So when they are hanging out, like they can just play with the pillows and or lay on them. Uh, and now I'm trying to go back to the stop share now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's super cool. So, so what, is, what is this, how does this relate to insect breeding? Is it, is it sort is that more of a theme that you jumped off from or? No, this is a good question. Let me go back to the website. So it relates because the Insect Breeding Institute was created in the same site as the Planting Breeding Institute back in 1912, mm, uh, where they, yeah, where there was all the tests for the Mendelian laws. Um, mm. Yeah, so that's how it relates like on idea and then um some other people did actually like a box with insects where they would breed um yeah i mean that you know everyone did their own thing um tessa did like a beautiful textile where she sewed like insects that the kids have drawn in some other workshop oh, how lovely yeah, yeah. um yeah, I've heard from a lot of people. I, I've worked, I haven't worked with kids myself so much, just a bit, but I've heard from a lot of people that working with kids could be really rewarding because they're so, you know, um, straightforward and they, they perceive things better than adults, you know? Yes, um, it's so rewarding. They yeah. don't have the culture feel. Yeah, exactly. Some of it, but not like completely. So they're just so pure in what they share with you. Yeah. It, it is amazing, yeah. I think I, I'm trying to remember, I think one time I did a workshop with kids where like, I, you know, I brought out all the gross things, but I, but I, but I was like, this is really gross. You know, I was like, really, <laughs> and, like no. and then they started smelling the cement and they went, ah, they flipped out. They were all screaming. And I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> it's the things we repress in ourselves as adults, you know? I mean, in fairness, I had told them you're going to smell like cat butt. And, you know, I just went for it, but yeah. So, so, so just going down through some of your, your, your projects, your recent and future projects that tell us a little bit about darkness and nature in, uh, Copenhagen. So this last year has been basically like my collaboration year. This is also um, this is a production by Naya Lee Jansen. 
She used to be a dancer. Now she's the creative director of um, a center for dance in Copenhagen. Um, so for this uh, piece, she wanted to create like an interdisciplinary experimental performance with sound, smell, light, and darkness. Um, so she created like, um, it's like an hypnotic trip almost. Like you get into a um, camping tent, like a, yeah, basically like, like a tent. There, there were like five or six of them and you get one for yourself. And then there is this sound with this totally, uh, storyteller really inducing you to some kind of uh, almost sleep state. But every time you almost fall asleep, something wakes you up. So you're just like in some kind of dream world. Um, and I made the sense for that. Um, the scent for this project is very much complementary. Like I, I made like a factory scent, fire, sea, forest. Uh, soil and a couple more that I can remember. So these ones are really like just to kind of put you into the mood of the of the hypnosis. But um, actually, like we developed these almost like over almost over two years. We've been having residencies together, and the people who came to test the performance. They would only notice like about three cents. The rest of them, even though some of them were very strong, uh, they would not be conscious about it. But I do think they, they have an effect. It's just, uh, ah, yeah, it's called uh, Darkness and Nature by Naya Lee Johnson, which is also right now performing in the Royal uh, Theater of Copenhagen. <laughs> it's like everything came to the end this week. Oh my God. <laughs> It's funny, you're gonna have to start some new projects. I know, <laughs> I know. So I'm looking for a link for everyone, but I, I can't find one. So here, I'll just let you do your own research. Nayali Johnson is the name of the artist. And no, uh, Naya, Naya. Oh, I Naya, can... sorry. Naya. No wonder I couldn't find it. Johnson. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Sure. I totally Americanized that name. <laughs> Nile oh. Johnson. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, thanks. Oh, and Minetta popped a, a link because Minetta's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, she found it quickly. Yeah, she's good. Um, that's cool. So, okay. So, so and then uh, one of my favorite projects that you've done uh, is the Cosmic Travel Kit. Oh my God. Yeah, that was also a two year project that, like, uh, I know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe a screen share also this. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I have a website open. This has been a commission by the Balton Laboratories in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Um, they put together a team of three, which was um, Peter Berges as a hacker technologist, Angela De Weijer as a sound artist, and myself as a sound designer. Share screen here. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. This is how it looked at the beginning, and this is how it looks now. So we made together this uh, wearable um where you can basically experience a uh, story through audio and scent it's gps controlled this means that depending on where you're walking at like you'll get like different sound and different scent so i i, I do like about this project that is really like a blueprint that this could be used for so many different things and places in this case, we designed an um, experience about the um, Philips uh, era, like when um, Eindhoven had the Philip, Philip um, industry over there. So we made like an abstract uh, story that would fuse like the past, the smells that could have been there, the sounds with the present. Um, we did not want to narrate something very literal rather than you get a experience um and this was a lot of fun like it's also been like a um, two-year project where we had many residences together um 
I kind of enjoyed like this lower process of developing things because um, it just gives you time and space to make things better. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's so, that's so, it's, 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 I, I mean, I agree with you and it's so challenging because you're always feeling this pressure to like produce, produce and yeah. make your space and stake your claim and, you know, and, yeah. and sometimes you forget that like things need time, you know, it's, they do. to be good, you know, it's easy to produce something crappy quickly, but when you really yeah. need to really, when you really want to think things through, you know, and get beyond the surface, like, because scent, I mean, I don't know, I'm curious about your thoughts about this, you know, I'm, I think we've yeah. talked about it, but it's so easy for scent to become gimmicky, you know what I mean, in an art piece, like, yeah. how do you, how do you deal with that sort of getting to the, to the deeper, the deeper, oh, I guess, time? Yeah, I mean, l later I would like to introduce two of my latest, my, my own artwork production, um, but uh, I, I'd relate to it more like through concept. Yeah. Um, through concept, concept, and sometimes maybe the. Yeah, it's just like you work with scent, and then it gets like a big attention. And sometimes, I barely have only scent on my artwork, so it's only a part of it. You know, like. It's, it's complementary to anything else. So no, the piece wouldn't be the same without the sound, but it also wouldn't be the same without, if it has sound, the sound. Visual or, or yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. But I think that I think that's really the trick, isn't it? Is to make sure that, that it's thought about in a, in a way that's endemic, like it's really a core part of the piece versus tacked on. I mean, like you, I see a lot of projects, you know, and the ones that stick with me are the ones that are, you know, um, the scent is, is yeah, I don't know. It's not done. It, it's sort of like doing things for Instagram versus doing things for real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you can't really do things with scent for Instagram anyway. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> you know, metaphorically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. it's not just for the hype of uh, I'm using scent and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. That. I mean, I'm curious about how you think about it because I know you've been doing it for a while and... Uh, I know we've had the same challenges, you know, just thinking about yeah. scent for ourselves, you know, and so how, how to make sure we, like you yourself, are doing it in a way that you're proud of, you know, and you feel good about. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Thought, yeah, so, thought, yeah. Thoughtfulness yeah. and time, I guess. Yeah. But go ahead. No, no. Yeah. No, exactly that. Like either through concept or, um, I mean, I do like a lot. I appreciate a lot the people who, who works with, scent uh, as the scent is the concept itself not not as a scent for a space but like um i don't know I, I i was teaching two years ago at the school where i started and um two of my students made an amazing piece about colonialism and they put the whole story into a beauty treatment where you would go somewhere and get your hands and your skin treated it was fucking amazing just like wow how they related it you know like sand was actually really the medium where they were telling the story through hmm. um and yeah I, yeah it's it's hard to tell yeah i mean these are also questions without answers you know but yeah. they're just it's just I I enjoy talking to you about these questions because I know we come from a similar background there, you know. Yeah. Um, so okay, let's keep going through your projects and then and then some some bigger questions. So tell us about the scent for Donna Donna Huanca. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to share this in in this talk because um, this has been really like I've been really like the black writer of scent, <laughs> and um, actually I feel so proud of this project that I thought it would be very nice to bring it to the public. Um, so Donna Juanca is this uh, American Bolivian uh, painter. She's based in Berlin. Um, I'm gonna screen share because I love her work. She does really amazing paintings, but she incorporates performance and sound. So when you walk into a museum and you see her, her artwork, it's not just a painting on a wall. There are models I'm showing you, yeah. Um, let's see, Donna Juanca. So back in 2018, she basically hired me to make a scent for an uh, exhibition in the Belvedere Museum in 
Vienna, which is massive. It's huge. Um, okay, hold on. Just opening the picture. Screen share here. The send was done for this room in theory. Uh, she asked me to do some send um, focused or inspired by a witch market in Mexico City. I've never been there, but she described it, what she was smelling, the feeling she wanna kind of create. And I made the scent for hair, which I can check. I have here my notebook with formulas. I, I, I don't have them stored in my computer. I have like really like... That's, I'm the same way, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. notebook. I have, I, have a, I have a binder of papers, it's messy. Yeah. They, they won't get lost like this. No. Okay, so... It was quite, um, I would say it was really visceral scent. You know, these things that you smell and you feel them on your belly. It had a bunch of pitidine that makes your stomach be like, ooh, unsettled. Uh, yeah, so she had it on space. And then she also uh, used this scent for another show in LA called Obsidian Leather at the Marciano Art Foundation. Oh, and actually, rest in oh, peace. they yeah. shut. Yeah, they've shut. It's so sad. Seriously, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, they shut. There was all sorts of labor disputes, and then instead of dealing with the labor issues, they just shut it down completely. Before be this is last year. Yeah, I know. Oh wow. I know it's a bummer. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, they. So in theory, they had over there in the, in the shop, they had like. They made some, um, yeah, oh, wow. bottle it, perf uh, not perfume, it's really scent, like it's not a perfume to use on your skin. Um, and they were selling them and they were donating the gains somewhere, I can't remember where exactly, but this is like, um, yeah, how they... It's a beautiful the, object. Yeah, and it's really like goes with her paintings. Um, where else? Ah, yeah, and then they also use the sand for the exhibition in uh, Copenhagen Contemporary called Lengua Llorona. Uh, so I've never said, I never managed to go to any of these shows, but then I have people who have been on the shows and I was like, hey, what did you think about this smell? They were like, oh yeah, it was very strong. And I'm like, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Say something nice. So Donna, Donna Lipowitz, who's, hi Donna. She says she went to the exhibition last year in LA. There, you see? There we go. <laughs> Could you smell the scent? Because I think that space was huge also. Huh? Donna, I'm going to ask you to unmute and chime in quickly. Hey. Hey, hey. Yeah, it was brilliant. And um, I actually think that was the best use of scent in a space, even if it was only one scent um, that I've ever experienced. So well done. Um, Thank and you. it was a big space. And I thought, yeah. how do I do it? And I was, I made, I actually, I mean, I, I made friends with some random people and we were all hunting for where the scent was coming from. Where is it coming from? Yeah. So, yeah. And we were like, oh, I see. We sort of, we thought we'd figured out where it was coming from. And that's so satisfying knowing that. But in, anyway, the whole experience when you walked in, then I went into the shop and looked at, the, looked at those little bottles. You know yeah. how you had that night spent ages looking at it all and photographing it and it was great so well done <laughs> thank you i'm hey, so happy donna. to see someone else who actually experienced <laughs> oh, that makes me happy too because I, I i never leave the house or I never oh, did, even then <laughs> so i missed it oh. i missed all the marciano shows um that's super cool and then and then your latest installation and then i want to talk a little bit about how you get to making the sense and how you work with the with the perfumes themselves or the materials themselves yeah but, your latest installation, Nothingness But Shining. Yeah. Um, um, tell us a little about that. Screen share as well. Let me check. So this was, uh, let me screen share here. Um, this is like a broom. Um, I made this uh, during um, Corona lockdown. I mean, Right, like setting up this show on the gallery was like kind of my first public appearance, actually. Um, and um, the, the the installation is about sitting with yourself and having to deal with with yourself and with your emotions and not being able to to run from them. Um, 
So it is pretty much something came, coming out from the lockdown. And I would say it can be extendable to other situations in life. But at the point that you're not able to catch a plane, fly somewhere, go somewhere else, work somewhere else, um, I did feel like this need to work on myself. And I wanted to kind of provide a space where people could do actually work on themselves or stay with their feelings um, on this wide neutral situation. Like there was a drone sound, very simple, always the same, that would kind of help you like relax. And then I had three smells, very simple. I think in one of them, I only had Helional. The other one was kind of sea smell with Calone and something else I can remember now. And uh, third one that was cotton scent. And then you had this huge pillow that was seven meters long and a wooden staircase that was going nowhere. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's, more or less clear what I wanted to. Yeah, it's lovely. I love the wooden staircase going nowhere. Yeah. I do and think uh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of people had to face themselves in that time. I did, yeah. you know? Me too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you and I both, I mean, we travel a lot, you know, so suddenly we're home and we're, we're dealing with our, ourselves, you know, so exactly. it's nice to, yeah, yeah, make a piece out of that. Yeah. So how do you come to the sense when you're so when you let's take this piece as an example like when you're coming to uh an art art piece you know and you know you want to have scent in it what, what's your process of developing the sense does the concept dictate the scent or does the scent dictate the concept or both or almost you almost always the concept dictates the scent so in this case in this case, actually, the scent was not so important. It was in this in one of these cases that it's part of the whole uh, space. So I did wanted to again create like a just a mood with the scent. Like um, I wanted to create like between A, R, and C, because that's what I think most most of us could feel relaxed with, um, or transported somewhere else that it's not very specific, but rather like an abstract re relaxing spot. Um, so that's how I choose the ingredients. I'm like, okay, I want to do something that uh, my people might help people to melt into the room and stay for a long time. And then I thought I would personally feel that way close, close to the sea. Some other people would be mountains, maybe, you know, like, um, um, but I chose that. I thought it went well also with the drone kind of sound. Uh, yeah, in that, in this case, it's it's pretty simple. When when I'm doing more like design work, like more like perfume, um, it's also concept based. Um, uh, but it's more in relation to to the story, right? Like I translate. Uh, story or a petition from someone directly into ingredients and then i can see it's a small fly then i can see if the which ingredients will go together and which will which ones will inhale enhance uh certain aspects of the fragrance it's a yeah. process of composition right yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. um someone's asking about um well, and I, I think I know the answer, but you're obviously working with a, 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 a synthetic aromatics and as well as naturals and whatnot. Do you yeah. have any, I mean, do you think about that? Is that something that you care about or? Uh, no, I, I really go through concept, even though after uh, the talk from Mauricio and the, uh, the experimental sense to me, I've, I've been really thinking like every time I hold a natural on my hand, I'm like, hmm what are we doing here you know <laughs> how many trees were cut or how many plants were they still for these and um is it okay or not it's very tricky yeah um, yeah it is because you know it's like i i we can harvest 
roses and vanilla and tonka bean at our gardens. Um, there could be more transparency maybe on how the people who are working live and where are their salaries eventually and, and what's happening on in the earth that these things are growing. Um, so I so I guess being conscious about it, like it's of course the first step to try to figure out a bit more where the ingredients come from. Yeah. You know? Well, Mauricio and, and his collaborators, there's four of them are putting, as I'm sure you're aware, but just maybe for those who aren't, there's this new coalition for sustainable perfumery that they're working on. Um, and the whole point of that is to encourage this sort of transparency and also speak about naturals honestly, you know, because obviously the the narrative uh, for people coming to perfume is always like, oh, synthetics are bad, naturals are good. And it's obviously not that simple at all. So, um, no, yeah, no. it's complicated, like everything. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to get into IFRA regulation. No. <laughs> that's, that's not what we're doing this morning. It's too early for me for that. Yes. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I wanted to ask you a little bit about people that you that you um, enjoy whose work. I mean, I know you know you start you started with Caro, who, by the way, I think just fi finished her PhD maybe this or next month or something. So yeah, yeah. sending Caro all her love and congratulations. Um, yeah. But are there any other artists that you sort of found inspiration in? You know, in olfactory art, so so called, or elsewhere. You know. Oh my god, this is so difficult. Like, of course, all factory art, like, um, I've been following main references. Um, this is a tall ass, Peter, the Cooper, yeah. Makiweda. Um, but um, it's kind of like, I, I check more on their work as, as kind of a learning process, but you know, like this emotional inspiration usually comes more from fine artists or like filmmakers. Hmm. Um, classic, I'm so sorry to be so boring. Pipilotti wrist is one of my favorites. That's not boring, come on. <laughs> it's like, it's so sensual and so tactile. So I do feel very inspired by, by words that make me feel haptic um, stimuli, like stuff that feels tactile, yeah. Um, and how about in the world? I mean, I know, for instance, you you're you have been in the past, maybe a little less now, very inspired by nightlife and club culture, and I have. yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, what to say about that? Like, I just I just hope the nightlife will start sometime again. Yeah. I'm, I'm very inspired by, I mean, I love music. I love electronic music. Um, this is something that always sparking my thoughts and uh, yeah. Um, it was great to hear Max playing some. Oh, wasn't he good? <laughs> That was so much fun. Oh man, I'm editing the awards video this week and I just, I'm just like, Maxwell, what a, like, where did that come? I mean, I know, yeah, I know where it came from, but it was so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. I have like these, um, I don't know how you call it in English, like, asignatura pendiente. How do you say that in English? I don't um, know. I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, like, I've always wanted to do more things with music. Myself. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's just like this dream that you know well, i mean like there's so much to do in this world exactly. you know? i mean um alex says hey they have to leave thank you for sharing your work no problem alex we'll share the video Thanks, alex. We'll later yeah yeah um, yeah aspirational yeah so it's okay. Donna, yeah maybe, maybe another life you know <laughs> yeah i if i could do my life forever i'd be an opera set designer seriously yeah <laughs> I'm not ashamed. Yeah, I like velvet. Amazing. I would not. <laughs> it's, just, it's literally just about the velvet. Like, I really like velvet. I like how it looks, you know. But, you know, we can always. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, th I think I think it was some variation of aspiration, Lee or Donna. Sorry, I didn't understand mm -hmm. it. I should have. Um, does anybody have any questions for Clara while we, we have about 10 more minutes. I'm going to ask her one more question here. But yeah, and I want to present my, the candles. Candles, that's what I was going to ask you about. Yeah. Tell us awesome. about your candles. Yes, um, I take them from here. 
Okay, so this is like a COVID baby. Like, I, I've never been really into doing products, even I, I love perfumes and candles and so on. But then uh, I finally had some time to, to create something. Ooh, look at those. Yeah, and I made like two candles. Tropical flower is um, jasmine and patchouli, and dry spell is uh, frankincense and uh, sweet orange. It's, um, they are products, but um, they really mean a lot to me. They come from this crazy experience I had with a Brazilian shaman. I had a set of, uh, I did not take any drugs. I have I was this about to say, because I'm like, okay, ayahuasca? <laughs> no, I have to say that. The, the, the things I saw in my mind, they were as if I had taken ayahuasca. I didn't, wow. I swear. Um, some friend of mine said, oh, but she gave you a massage. Maybe, you know, she used some cream with something. I'm like, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Anyways. So the tropical flower is like a celebration of a community, of the feeling of belonging, um, feeling of um, being at home in nature. Uh, yeah, on, on the visualization I had, like, I was in a group of people, we were all naked in the jungle, and we were wearing these massive white flower garlands that smell amazing. So funny, huh? And then the dry spell is kind of a bit of the opposite, like, it's more like in relation to the feeling of loneliness, of being on your own in life, but uh, still kind of coping with the sadness as being proud of what you've done and achieved. Um, yeah, so this one is kind of um, inspired on the desert. And you spend yeah. quite a bit of time in North Africa, don't you, in the desert? Yeah, uh, I spent like one year and a half going to the desert almost every two months. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's kind of a weird story, like Actually, like in this visualization, I was like some sort of nomad man dying in a huge dune in some like massive sandstorm. Um, and this came off uh, out of some thoughts. I, I, I was just triggered why am I going there so often and so on. And um, when I questioned that to myself, this kind of thing came to my mind. So I thought it's nice to kind of share it on a share the story in candles. Ah, yeah, and the illustrations are made by illustrator Rohan Wang. She's also based in Berlin. She has really amazing work, very special. She's now launched uh, some Air Max with Nike. Crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's really cool. Yeah, so she made the, the illustration. Yeah. Donna says beautiful aesthetic. So guys, do we have any questions for Clara before we, we close out? Does anybody have, we have probably time for one or two questions. I have my own, but <laughs> I always have questions, but maybe you guys do as well. Um, actually, while, while we're waiting for a question to pop up, but I'm sort of interested in, in if you see in the larger picture of sort of working with with uh, scent uh, in an experimental fashion, are you? Yeah. Do you see themes that come up over and over in other people's work and your own work or, or interests? Um, body odor is always popping out. Which one? Body, body odor. odor. Yeah. Like this hand is uh -huh. popping out by a lot of people all the time. And uh, body odor. What's another? Outer space. Yeah. Yeah, and now NASA made a perfume, huh? Yeah. 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 Be cool. Yeah, outer space. Um, what else is there that is kind of... Technology in general, sort of the new new frontier of technology, uh, di you know, digitizing scent. Some, something that I, I see yeah, a lot but of, that's you know. Like, I, know. I mean... It makes for a good Wired article, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Not to be cynical, but yeah, I'm like... Oh, it's okay. back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Like, are we really going to have all sent printers with us to send uh, sent the mojis? I don't think so. Yeah. 
Um, my friend, uh, my friend, uh, our, uh, my friend, the artist Marco Sletchians on who is my friend, on Monday gave a talk about his own work. He works with hypnosis and inductive um, oh, spaces. Oh, You'd love him, Clara. I should, amazing. I should introduce you guys actually. Yeah. But, but uh, he talked about the concept of originality. And, and so he talked about, well, here's the thing about originality. We're always looking for, at originality from the perspective of like being new. And he's like, but what we should start thinking about with the concept of originality is that we're actually going to the origin source. Like we're, we're referring to things that have been done and interpreting them and, and really thinking about them in our, I'm totally paraphrasing by the way, but in yeah. our own way, you know, and I think that for me, that was really refreshing, you know, to hear that different approach to, to the concept of originality. And it relates, the reason I bring it up is it relates to your, what you were talking about, about taking time with things, you know? Yeah. Like really being with them and, and examining them. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes like, I would really love for my future career like that when you have like you can work on a project and then let it let it be for like some time and then take go back, back to, to it, it you know yeah. yeah that that's the best way because as you said it's not the same like producing art um, for the Instagram or for like a cute uh, quick production for a museum you know, mm. and um, when things like have time to grow, you can water them, give them love, and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary because, you know, it's possible that someone does it before you, you know, always, but. I know. Oh, it's such a night. It's like we're, when we're also looking out for it and looking out for being caught. Well, it's, it's not, also a money issue, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I guess most of the artists are in the same situation as I am. Like, you get a commission and the commission has a deadline. And usually it comes quick. It's not like a two years deadline. Like yeah. I've been lucky with some of these projects that, that could take a longer time, but yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Ratna says, Clara, you should make an aroma wheel of emotion and expression. Yeah. Like a <laughs> there we go, idea. That's a great idea, thank you. <laughs> and then Amir asks, um, what brand in your opinion is really pushing the boundaries in the world of perfume, perfume, like perfumery? Are there any brands that you look to with uh, with admiration and interest? Um, I'm not sure if I should say that, but yeah, careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, brand. Mm. I do not have like favorite brands on. I I like more like single products of for the quality of different places, but I can come now with a brand that I'm like, yay, like. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an impossible question because first of all, you have to remember, <laughs> which is I can never remember, but also there's so many brands pushing boundaries in their own way, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, but I think this is also part of their marketing. Like when I, when you ask me this, brand that comes to my mind is um, um, Etat d'Orange. How is yeah, it called? Etat Libre d'Orange, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the first thing that comes to my mind, but it's on their marketing to make you feel that way, you know? Totally. Like those crazy labels and those crazy perfume names and... Totally. I do have but they to do a good job. I mean, I have to yes. say they do. I do think they do a I'm good job. I'm going to say that. Yeah. I, I, I do. I'm still amazed by the fluidly body scent uh, fragrance. How was that called? Écression magnifique. Oh my God. Yeah. I still think that's amazing. Perfume. And it's not, and the thing that's amazing about it is it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't an olfactory art piece. This was a perfume for market. You know, if you guys aren't familiar with it, those of you watching, it's a perfume uh, made by, um, oh shoot, I'm forgetting the perfumer's name. I'll remember in a minute. Yeah. For Etat Libre d'Orange called Secretion, Secretions Magnifique. For, yeah. Um, and I'll find the link. And it's basically the scent of you know, sperm, you know, body odors effectively. Blood, pee. Blood, uh, yeah. It's kind of... Oh, and Minette already put it in the chat. She's yeah. incredible. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite famous amongst the, amongst the perfume people for being, um, yeah, uh, ahead of its time. Uh, just, I don't know, just really audacious, you know? Um, Antoine, oh, thank you, Antoine Lee. I really appreciate that, David. 
the perfumer was Antoine Lee for uh, for Italy pour l'orange. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, any other questions, you guys? We have about two more minutes with, actually we're over time, but maybe Clara will give us one more minute. Yeah. Anybody? Clara, what are you excited about? What's your, I mean, what's next? <laughs> So, <laughs> I know, I know. You can also just coming. hang out. <laughs> oh. What's next? I'm going on an artist in residency to a city like four hours away from Berlin. Um, so I'm excited about that because I'm going to be able to produce a new piece uh, and focus on to doing that on, a, on one month. Uh, I have some ideas already, but it's 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 gonna be uh, location based so we'll see what happens when i'm there see what the city inspires yeah uh yeah so that's what i'm looking forward to and hopefully uh more workshops in this mail lab with chiara from italy uh yeah yeah anyways we'll see how things are lots going. to do are you are you open to the public right now the smell lab in berlin so I've opened to the public last month, but I'm only doing the basic blend your own perfume workshop right. with three people at the time. Of Super four limited. Months. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But that's cool. You're able to have people in again. Like we can. Yeah. <laughs> no, no open lab so far. Or, uh, okay. uh, people are asking for it, but I don't know. This is a place where I work also and I have to be very careful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it, it's okay to take your time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Clara, my, my, my Clarita, I'm so happy to spend time with you. <laughs> Likewise, um, yeah. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing what comes out of your next residency. It's actually really nice to sit down and just hear about your projects one by one. So thanks for doing that. Uh, thanks for hosting me and for the nice talk and yeah. questions. And uh, thank you, everyone, of course, for being here. Thank you, Mineta. Thank you, Minetta. <laughs> you too was late. Very bad, you too. So bad. <laughs> okay. A friend of mine from the Netherlands. Oh, really? Oh, no. it's okay. Being late is the new being early. Um, cool. So we're gonna we're gonna put this online. Uh, I just actually, while I have a moment, I just like to shout out a couple of things. There's two people on this call. There's Olivia Jesler who's hosting. Uh, an event called Scent Futures on October 1st. So if you're interested in speculative explorations with scent, sign up, check it out. And then I think he's still here, Andreas Keller um, is uh, opening a new, um, a new initiative for olfactory art. So um, definitely keep an eye out for that. I'm not gonna say too much. I don't know what's public yet. So, but keep an eye out for that. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out of his camp. So hi Olivia, hi Andreas. And, uh, yeah, Catherine Haley Epstein is going to be giving a talk soon. She's on this call as well. She's going to do another Maiden Nose in, I think, end of October. And then tomorrow, just if you guys haven't signed up, tune in. We have Joseph Cartana joining us from New York uh, to talk about his his, uh, his practice and his brand, Six Cents. So, all right, Clara, I can't wait to just give you a hug in person one day. The I next know. Experimental Scent Summit will be in person somewhere. 2021. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 2021 somewhere. <laughs> in yeah. person. Hey, yeah. thank you so much. This yeah, was thanks, Clara. Yeah, it was lovely to talk to you. Thanks for your time. And obviously, um, we'll all be in touch. Have a lovely day, everyone. Evening in Berlin. Morning in LA. Yeah.